The Autumn Joy Live Show is sponsored by Everything Legendary, where plant-based is oh so good. For more information, visit our website at golegendary.com and follow us on social media. Sobe Restaurant and Lounge is a proud sponsor of the Autumn Joy Live Show. Sobe, surpassing the ordinary in Prince George's County with superior service and a distinguished and inspired menu. TV show. Autumn Joy Live. What's your favorite TV show? Autumn Joy Live. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to season two of the Autumn Joy Live show. Did you miss me? Yeah, Barnell Hill reference there. Oh my goodness, I have been up to so much, which includes going to an entirely different continent, y'all. I went home, and I'm not talking about up the street in Upper Marlboro. I'm talking about the motherland, Africa, more specifically, South Africa. And if you ever have the opportunity, please go to South Africa. Just go to Africa, period. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later on when I have my special guests that are here to talk all things South Africa. We're going to talk about going to Cape Town. We're going to talk about our safari and how close I was to a lion. No, a real lion, y'all. It was amazing. So we're going to chat about that later. Oh, and I can't forget my birthday. We celebrated my big Aquarius birthday bash in January on the 26th to be exact. Shout out to my very good friend, Neo. He was in town performing at the Kennedy Center. He hit me up and was like, Autumn, I'm gonna host your birthday party. So I said, okay, Neo, come through. And he did, and we had such an amazing time. Oh my goodness, too many people to thank, but just know I love each and every one of you that came out and showed me love. And then on Sunday, we had an amazing brunch at Sobe Restaurant and Lounge, and y'all, your girl, got not one, but two different proclamations. Okay. So the very first one came from our county executive, Angela Also Brooks, where she told me, yeah, y'all, I am now officially the pride of Prince George's County. What? I know, right? That's lit. I just know that rose petals should probably be thrown at my feet wherever I walk. So yeah, you know that I was there. And the second proclamation came from my very good friend, Wallably Gay. You all, are you ready for this? January 26th, is officially the Autumn Joy Live Day right here in Prince George's County. What? I did it, I did it, your girl did it. I have my very own day. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do on the day yet, but I know that I have one, so there's that. <laughs> All of that exciting things happened. All right, coming up inside of your Hollywood Crunch, stay right here because we're gonna talk about your guy, Judge Mathis, and what is going on. Is he coming back to television? Yeah, we're gonna chat about that on your Hollywood Crunch. Stay right here. Every two minutes, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer. With your help, we can end breast cancer. We are all stronger together. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Autumn Joy Live Show. Let's get right into your Hollywood crunch. So we got to talk about my girl, Riri, who just killed it at the Super Bowl. Y'all, she had more viewers for her halftime show than the entire Super Bowl. That's what you call hashtag black girl magic. Now, we all found out that same night that her and ASAP Rocky are expecting their second child and wedding plans are coming soon, yes. Now the wedding is expected to take place back home on her home island of Barbados and sources are telling us that if Riri has it her way, she wants a house full of little babies. I'm thinking like four, Baby five, Riri. Let's move on to our guy, Judge Mathis. Okay, now we all heard that after two decades of broadcasting, our daytime television favorites, Judge Mathis, will soon be coming to an end. That's right, the Judge Mathis show will be ending on its 24th season. Now, Greg Mathis is the longest running black male host on television. He's second to Judge Judy as the longest serving judge in courtroom television. That's what I'm talking about. Now, Judge Mathis has since taken the social media to further discuss the news, hinting at another program saying, quote, 
But the good news is the other studios aren't getting out of the judge show business. Now, as you can see with the robe still on, something might be happening real soon. He also shares his interest in joining a black studio, claiming one of the studios dismissed all of the people of color and hired white males to take their place. What? Now, reportedly, People's Court will also soon be ending on its 26th season. Y'all, get into this story. Guess who's pregnant? Rapper The Brat. Yes, her and her wife Judy are expecting a baby. The couple is telling us exclusively that prior to their relationship, Judy was already a mother of three children, and DeBrat really never had any plans on having any of her own. Now, originally, she didn't like the idea of carrying a child, saying, I was like nothing was gonna ever come out of me. Well, now it is. <laughs> so Judy was able to convince her otherwise, saying she felt DeBrat needed to experience being pregnant. Now, Judy suffered major health complications following her egg retrieval, so it was best for DeBrat to carry. DeBrat also had to undergo surgery to remove fibroids and polyps prior to her embryo transfer procedure. They at first suffered a miscarriage, unfortunately, but luckily still had some eggs left to try again and were successful. Aw, I wish the couple nothing but amazing success. All right. As promised, are you guys ready to hear about my South Africa trip? If you are, stay right there. Don't move. We're going to talk all about it next, right here on the AutoJoy Live Show. Children are spending more time at home. Teachers, parents, neighbors, and friends, it's up to you to keep them safe. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. By phone, video chat, and social media. If you have concerns or see changes in a child, be there for them. Ask questions. Seek help. Report suspected child abuse or neglect. All right, welcome back to the Autumn Joy Live show. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, I recently went back home to South Africa for the first time. And again, if you ever get the chance to experience a trip like that, please go. It will change your life. But I asked some of my travel comrades to join me tonight and share their experiences. So please help me welcome Anya and Crystal. Hello, Hi. my friends. Oh, great. Hi. <laughs> Look, we're so far away. I know. Too so far. I haven't seen you all since South Africa. Oh, my gosh. Amazing trip. So good to see you. Again. You too. The trip was incredible. Yeah. So, so okay, let's talk about leading up. So, mm -hmm. when I heard about the trip, I was excited because mm -hmm. I had never been to Africa. Right. And I've always wanted to go. It's one of those places where you say, I'm going to go one day. Yeah. Right. And gosh darn it, one day came. <laughs> yeah. And so, we jumped on it. So, what was your initial reaction when you first heard about the trip? Uh, well, we were excited. We heard it on the radio station. And... Like you said, Africa is like bucket list. Like if one day we can make it to Africa, we're gonna go. And we both looked at the itinerary and was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> looked at the price like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it was like, like, okay, let's put this deposit. Let's we're committed. It. We're yeah. committed. We put the deposit yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. Super excited. Yeah. Like we we had just decided we're gonna start taking trips, big trips. This trip came up and we were like, we jumped on it. Yeah. And immediately excited. Yeah. yeah. I saw that 15 hour flight and I was a little bit nervous. Oh my God. <laughs> I was a smidge nervous, but I was like, you know what? We gonna do this. Yeah. We, we gonna get yeah. there. Yeah. But it's yeah. okay. They kept us okay with the food and the wine. They, they did. did. <laughs> I got off the flight like, where we at? Yeah. How much wine did I have? Yeah. <laughs> But when yeah. we did, so when we initially landed, um, we were in we were in Johannesburg mm -hmm. initially, mm -hmm. and when I got there, I, I think I immediately had this feeling of being home, yeah. like being at peace. Right. Did you have that type of feeling? Yeah, I, I, I think my feeling came more so when we were riding through mm -hmm. the town, yes. yeah, um, and like going to the accommodations, like observing everything and just taking it all in, and you know things that are or are not stereotypically Africa. Like, yeah. just learning and being immersed in the culture is what really made me feel. Yeah, yeah. Calm. I think for me, Cape Town. Yeah. Like, when we got to Cape Town, um, Robin Island, yeah. was it changed my saying. perspective on so much. <laughs> Learning about Nelson Mandela, visiting the island, yes. seeing where he slept and was kept for, was it over like 20 years? Yes. It had like a, a spiritual kind of feeling yes. for me. Did that happen yes. to you? Yeah, it's Ryan? different. Um, it's, it, it's different hearing about it and reading about it and seeing pictures. And then when you're there mm -hmm. and you get, it's a different feeling or experience. Mm -hmm. You get immersed in almost like the emotion of it. And, yeah. uh, and then you can kind of 
you can kind of walk a couple steps in his shoes. You can never really walk all those steps, but yeah. getting that experience yeah. is it's sobering, but it's also awakening. Yeah. And that's when I felt home. It was like, oh, now I, now I sense like where the roots come from. Yeah. yeah. Table Mountain, considered oh. one of the new seven wonders of the world. Up there. Oh my goodness. So I literally was like on the edge, I know, I like never right. Like that. I looked down. I said, okay, Jesus, just don't let a, a yeah. brisk wind take me over. But even that, in and of itself, <clears throat> like you look down and you see Cape Town, you could see the beach. Yeah. Like, what was your experience? I like? mean, it was a really cloudy day, the day that we went, and going up through the clouds oh, and then coming out on top, and you can see everything, beaches, my, like. It was absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So we got to get into the you safari. Oh because we, first of all, I That's have to commend part. you both because you all were like cinematographers. Ah. Like legit had the angles, had the camera. Like you all were lit on the trip with <laughs> your camera. trying to keep work. up, okay? Just trying to keep <laughs> up. That's what it was. <laughs> but can we talk about how close we were? Okay, so just for reference to the audience, we we were in, like our trucks did not have cages. Nothing. Like the ad, the wild animals Autumn, were I did walking. did not know that. Yes. Did not Before know we got there, happened. we didn't know. <laughs> Neither did. I, I don't think I even thought to ask. You know, I just thought automatically it would. And so as we're riding along and we're this close to lions, watching lions mate, I was like, okay, Jesus, is this normal? Like, are we supposed to be this close to wildlife? But they, but they kept pulling up like the leopard, like pulling yeah, into under the tree. Yeah. I understand he's eating right now, but he could still pounce down on us, right? <laughs> right? right. Like, <laughs> Real yeah, life. yeah, like when we went into the middle of like those nine uh, young male lions, yeah. and we drove through the middle. Because at first I thought he was going to pull up on the side, take some pictures. He was like, yeah, let's go sleep with them. And he was like, <laughs> whoa. Come on now. It it's was, like, no, yeah. but okay. Uh, I guess was, I have to be part of the experience. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people realize or can appreciate how it feels to have a lion walk by you. Yeah. And yeah. You. It's, the king of the jungle. Yeah. The elephants. <laughs> yeah. You had a scary experience oh, with the elephants. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the bull was like, try, like protecting his territory, and elephants were running, and we were like, "Do we need to? Do you need to reverse? Are, are we yeah. gonna be okay?" <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, they, and they roared. The elephants roar is almost like a lion's like roar. a growl, like, like a yeah. yeah. I never knew that, and it yeah. was like a, a loud growl. Yeah. yeah. And we got to hug them. We had we, we did. did the elephant yeah. experience. We did the elephant experience. We got to hug the elephants and yeah. take pictures as they were pushing us away with their trunks, like really go get us food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some great shots, yeah. right? Yeah. So awesome. if you could describe South Africa. Just the experience all uh, all together in one word. What would it be? Who wants to go first? One word. That's good. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to say life-changing. That's not one um, word. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's uh, just a snippet. It For so many reasons, it changed my perspective on life. Okay. But, Crystal, you um, the last word. I would say rich. Just rich in culture, rich in, like, humility. Like, yeah. full, everything was just a breath of fresh air and so like powerful yeah. across the board. Yeah, okay, well you know we're planning on going back, okay? So y'all be on the lookout, y'all be on the lookout. I fell in love with South Africa. Yeah. I fell in love with the continent itself. So we're definitely going back, so be on the lookout. We'll be there. We'll be there. Yes. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Anya and Crystal, thank you so much for being thank my you. guests today. Thank you for having us. Here's to Africa, woo, yeah. woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Live Squad, don't go anywhere. We've got your local love coming up next right here on the Autumn Joy Live Show. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. All right, welcome back to the Autumn Joy Live Show. And it's time for one of my favorite segments called Local Love. Now, we all know that the DMV is literally the place to be. And when it comes to making movies, we are taking a seat at the big table. Prince George's County just hosted their very first film festival at the National Harbor. And y'all, it was a huge success. So we want to show some local love to one of our very own movie makers that's blowing up on the big screen, Live Squad. Let's give some love to director and Emmy-nominated producer, Harold Jackson. Hello, my friend. It is such an honor. I am good. How are you? Welcome. Do you like my set? I love it. It's nice. I right? love it. I'm going to get your picture up there one day. Uh, uh, well, what, what, what you waiting on? What you waiting on? <laughs> I got you after this right, interview. Right. I am so excited to chat with you. Yeah, me too. So growing up in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. um, you came here to the DMV area. Um, you got your master's. Why yes. did you decide to make movies about 
What's going on in the DMV? Um, well, I uh, grew up in Los Angeles, and, and when I tell people that, they get they say, well, what are you doing over here? Well, the, the L.A. that I grew up in is, is not Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, like totally, it's like a totally different place. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up uh, uh, going into the military, into the Marine Corps, and I sort of bounced around after I, after I got out of the Marine Corps. I ended up in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and then I ended up here uh, in the DMV. And um, I've always been a filmmaker at heart. Mm -hmm. So uh, once I got here and I got settled and it was so much love and the people uh, sort of embraced me and uh, it was just the perfect place for me to make home. Yeah, and, yeah. and I know growing up here, I'm Prince George's County native, we weren't ever known for the movie <laughs> right, place, right, come right, here to make right. a movie. I never in a million years would have thought yeah. that this would become such a hub. So what do you think the difference is now that it is compared to what it wasn't back so many years ago. Yeah, even even for me, I, I've, I've, I haven't, obviously I didn't grow up here, but um, I, like when I first got here, it was uh, it was kind of a desert, right? It was just a lot of guys and, and, and women who just love make, making films and it was a small group and they just poured all their money into it and nothing came out of it. And then in, probably in the past four or five years, the sort of tide has shifted, yeah. technology has shifted, uh, uh, the ability to produce and make money off your films has shifted. Mm -hmm. So it's all sort of worked this way here. And then there's such a talented group of uh, individuals, both uh, in front of and behind the camera in this area already. And I think it's just about that time for everybody to get their due. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, it, great segue into my next question, mm -hmm. because you talk about how, you know, the, the money making aspect. Streaming. Do you yeah. feel that streaming with the different um, apps like the Tubi's of the world uh -huh. and um, the Hulu's of the world. Do you feel like those type of outlets have given filmmakers like yourself a broader stage to perform on, if you will? Whereas before, you either had HBO stars. It, it, there really wasn't that many outlets. Do you think that really helped? Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, I think it's, it's a combination of more outlets, mm -hmm. more streaming platforms, uh, uh, sort of this sort of globalization of money being made. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, technology moving okay. more towards us. So like even the big name, even the Netflix of the world and the, and the uh, big studios in Hollywood, they're all making smaller films now. Yeah. They're spending smaller films for them. Yeah. They're spending less money. The films are getting shorter. So all the changes that are happening in Hollywood are all moving towards people like me and yeah. the filmmakers in this area. And again, it goes back to um, even with the changes in the technology and all those sorts of things, if the talent wasn't there, you still couldn't capitalize on it, mm -hmm. right? You still, that it's still, so at some point it comes down to talent. Yeah. And I think this area has just proven how talented they are. There's, there's, uh, there's a lot of companies here that are, myself included, that are making some really good product. Yeah. And it's, and it's going out into the world and people are actually making a living making movies now. So yeah. that's exciting. So, so when Harold makes his projects, mm -hmm. when you go into your creative block, it's the best. Ah, oh, where do you it's go? Do you go to like an isolated cabin in the woods? Do you go uh, <laughs> to a coffee shop and you know, like, yeah, yeah. what's your pro your creative process? Um, well, I, I think I start my I start in sort of my normal routine every mm -hmm. day, and then when I, when I sort of get down to the nitty gritty of a project, mm -hmm. and I need to finish it, and I need to just focus on sort of wrapping it mm -hmm. and, and and tying it up, then that's when I sort of disappear into my own world. Um, sometimes I'll go uh, just get a just get a room in D.C. and just sort of hang out, just mm -hmm. away from home. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go even further than that. Um, sometimes I'll go back home to L.A. but won't. Don't, don't tell my family that I'm, <laughs> that I'm at home, right? And then I'll just sort of hang and just sort of get get myself together and sort of get locked in on what I need to do. Yeah. So it's, it's a combination of just being a, a professional writer and a professional producer mm -hmm. where you write every day, you work every day, every day you're trying to get better and, and closer to that product and yeah. to that production um, on top of uh, having your own little sort of special sauce that keeps you keeps you sharp and keeps yeah. you creative. Yeah. Well, yeah. DC is such a political town, uh -huh. you know? Like, how do you find creatives? How do you sift through the well, interns on Capitol Hill and the right, people, right, you right. know what I mean? Like, how do you find people that are serious about the craft here in the DMV? I think like-minded people find each other, mm. right? So you don't have to really go searching for it once you, once you sort of put yourself out there mm -hmm. and, you, and, you, and, and your name starts to get out there and people start to understand the types of things that you're doing and the types of things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, then you sort of, sort of that gravity just pulls talented people yeah. to you, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you remember a time where there was, a, it was a struggle 
to, mm -hmm. to get a project out where maybe writer's block set in and you couldn't figure out mm -hmm. where to draw inspiration from. How did you pull yourself out of that, that mental space? What, did, what do you do to get yourself, uh, you know, to, to create? Yeah, um, so I think uh, the biggest thing for me is um, I, I try to, I, creativity sort of, you never run out of it. Mm -hmm. So the more creative you are, the more you have. And it's when you slow down, it's when you start to lose that, that, that energy, right? Yeah. So I try to stay moving and stay active, kind of like a shark, just never really rest and mm -hmm. sort of, well, you know, take some time to rest. But creatively, even when I'm resting creatively, I'm still sort of working on something. Yeah. So as long as you as long as you stay creative, mm -hmm. you'll have creativity. It's when you it's when you sort of check out of create of being creative mm -hmm. is when you lose that. Yeah. yeah. Would you say that black filmmakers and producers mm -hmm. are getting uh, more funding and, and more help from these studios? Or are you still finding it that it's somewhat of a struggle, maybe crabs in a barrel kind of a mentality? Um, I think the, the, the tide is shifting. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing to understand is that uh, in previous iterations of Hollywood and filmmaking, you needed a ton of money right. and you needed the biggest stars and you needed all these elements just to even kind of be competitive, mm -hmm. right? And then on top of that, then you deal with the black filmmaker and the this and the that, and you got all these things going on. But I think t the, 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 the tide is sort of shifting yeah. where it's about, can you make a quality product? Mm -hmm. And that sort of quality product sort of rises to the top. Yeah. And I think if you, and, and a prime example of that is if you go on Netflix, um, who is still, as far as streaming goes, they're still the big dog. Yeah. Um, and you watch, and they got all their uh, original movies out there, mm -hmm. and, and probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of them mm -hmm. have actors you've never heard of and never right. seen before, mm -hmm. right? Because it's really about, it's starting to transition from phasing out movie stars. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of actors don't want to hear this. Hear that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and just phasing in quality productions and quality actors right. and, and people and people who can create quality work. Right. Yeah. So Joe Blow down the block shoots mm -hmm. a movie and he's so proud of it. He wants the world to see it. Right. What advice can you give like young filmmakers that want their projects to be seen? And, mm -hmm. and is it easy to get into a film festival? Like what's that process like? Um, uh, the, there's a lot of film festivals, mm -hmm. right? Um, film, as, that's kind of where my trajectory started. Like, mm -hmm. if you go back to my earlier work, I was the film festival king. And, I would, <laughs> I, and it didn't matter where it was, I would go out and travel. It could be the Cincinnati Film Festival, and mm -hmm. I would be in Cincinnati uh, uh, promoting my film and, and doing that sort of thing. And I sort of phased out where I really, when I do do film festivals, I only do the, the bigger ones now. Mm -hmm. But that energy sort of helped me build up. And that's where I got a lot of uh, recognition outside of, my network, right? right? New people started seeing me, new people started uh, uh, seeing what I was saying and, 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 and they started to want to hear more. Mm. So that helped me in the future. So, so um, uh, film festivals are really submit. If they like it, they take it. If they don't like it, they don't take it. Mm -hmm. But you just got to keep going and keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So next question, what, yeah. what advice do you have for these young filmmakers that are looking, looking at a Herald and, and thinking, mm -hmm. you know what, if Harold can do it, I can do it. Yeah, well, you can do it. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. Um, this is not a, an impossible task. Um, I, I, I would say just as an, an artist, I would tell you to respect the craft and try to learn it as best you can. Um, outside of that, I would, my biggest advice to uh, up and coming filmmaker is don't just work hard, mm -hmm. right? That's what I did when I was coming up. I just outworked everybody and it helped me build a sort of reputation, mm -hmm. but the when I when I got a little older and smarter in the game and I started working smarter is when I was able to transition those products yeah. to just having something done to having something that's actually out there making money. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got to talk about your latest project, Once yeah. Upon a Time in the District. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's coming out. And Once Upon a Time in the District is starring a bunch of uh, really good local talent with some seasoned veteran actors, uh, uh, Judy Johnson, uh, Ashley Rios, Milan Perez. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop there because I'll start, I'll start forgetting people. <laughs> Danny Gavigan, um, and these guys have some of these some of these actors have been with me for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, they they were they were working with me uh, when there was um, you know we were working for a hundred bucks a day, sometimes doing me favors. Right yeah. now, uh, Judy is specifically Judy Johnson is on uh, All Blacks number one show uh, Double Cross. 
Shout right? out to the Gibsons. Those yeah, are, yeah, that's the, my the fan Gibsons. right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she's on, she's on that show. Uh, Ashley Rios is now on uh, 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 Paramount's new series yeah. uh, called uh, Cross with Aldous Hodge. Mm -hmm. So these people are like making moves, right? Yeah. And uh, so Once Upon a Time in the District is coming out in March. However, if you want to see something from me now, you can see my film called Gaslight. Ah. And that is starring uh, Milan Perez. And uh, I try to show love to the people who show love yeah. to me. And she's in both of my, both of my films. Mm -hmm. um, and that film is out uh, on Tubi right now. You can go on Tubi right now and watch it yeah. for free, or you can rent it yeah. uh, on Apple TV. Or, uh, rent it, y'all. Yeah, rent it, rent it, rent it, rent it. But uh, make sure you see it. See it, talk about it, uh, share it, uh, Instagram story, tweet, whatever it is you do, do that. Because these, because we're, you know, we're still making moves out here, so yeah. every little bit helps. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, Harold Jackson, if my life squad wants to get in contact with you, maybe be in one of your films, where mm -hmm. can we find you on social? Yeah, uh, Harold, at Harold Jackson 3 is mm -hmm. the quickest way. But if you Google me, Harold Jackson or Harold Jackson III, uh, a, a laundry list of stuff will pop up. Oh. So get in contact with me. Yes, yeah. well, Emmy-nominated producer, yeah. Harold Jackson, thank you so much for being oh, my thank guest you. today. Thank you. All right, Live Squad, don't go away because your favorite segment, Ask Autumn Joy, is coming up next. <laughs> it takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. Hey, welcome back to the Auto Joy Live Show. And since the start of the new year, I have received tons of mail from all of my live squad around the DMV, asking me everything from if I'm single to who's my favorite artist. So I'm gonna try to get to all of them, but let's start with Karen from Silver Spring. She says, hey, Autumn Joy Live, I have a seven-year-old and my career is really starting to get busy. I love what I do, but how do I manage being a good mom and manage a busy career? Ooh, Karen, girl. I am one person that can speak to that. Okay, so as you all know, I have an 11 year old and what I decided to start doing was involving him in my activities. Yeah, so instead of trying to find a sitter or trying to scuffle to find someone to help me out, I decided one day, you know what? My child is gonna be my plus one. So Karen, girl, take your children with you. Yeah, when you get booked for your events, just make sure you ask the person that's doing the event if there's an area, like a holding area, where your children can hang out, they'll have their phones, their, head, their headsets, you know, all the stuff the kids love, and they can entertain themselves. By doing this, your children understand why you're always so busy. They see that mommy has a career and she's making a living so that they can afford those fancy devices that they're listening to. And the most important part of it all is that they too will fall in love with the process how you did. So allowing your children to come with you, it eliminates all of that. So definitely look into that. And girl, I really do hope that that works out because my son, he's always been my plus one and will continue to be. That's my little bestie. <laughs> all right, let's get into my second question. And this time it's from Andre, who lives in Hyattsville. He says, hey, Autumn Joy Live. I'm 28 years old and I've been dating a woman who's 41. Ooh, okay, cool girl. My mom is 55 and is having a really difficult time accepting who I'm in love with. How can I make this work with my mom? Okay, this one's pretty loaded. All right, first things first, the heart wants what the heart wants. We can't help who we love, right? So you're gonna have to talk to your mom and help her understand why you're in love with a woman that's twice your age. Because your mom is looking at it from the perspective of, who is this older lady that is preying on my little sweet, young, innocent baby boy? But you have to let your mom know you're no longer a boy. You're now a grown man that is fully capable of choosing who you love. And you're also a very good judge of character. So talk to your mom, let her know, hey, this is the woman who I wanna be with. Now, once you do that, you have to set up a time and a date for them to meet. And when you do that, make sure it's at a public location, but also again, make sure that they understand boundaries. And that way, when the two come together, they'll be able to see why each one of them loves you for who you are, okay? So hopefully this one helps. <laughs> all right, you all, I am all out of time, but do me a favor. If you have any questions, send them to me, okay? My email, ask, Autumn Joy with an I at gmail.com and I will try my best to answer it. I want to thank all of my guests for coming on my show today. 
and Live Squad. Make sure you follow us on social media. And until next time, have an amazing, amazing time. I'll see you later.